Hello everyone, so I just wanted to uh, do a little practice session here and I'm just with you on the uh, Gershwin piece. I'm making a tutorial for this at the moment. Uh, so the Gershwin piece, the, the man I love, um, it's on the uh, ABRSM diploma syllabus. I think maybe on some of the other um, syllab syllabi, syllab yeah. Um, I think it might be on some of the other syll syllabuses as, as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to sort of play it through and um, I don't know if there's some insights you take from this then, then great. Um, the, the, the tutorial um, um, uh, that I'm making with this will be really, really uh, comprehensive, really full on. Uh, but perhaps you can pick up a few uh, little tips along the way from, from this as well. So one of the things I've been thinking about a little bit with this piece is just finding ways to make it um, just easier and a little bit less awkward. So with these chords at the start, these ones specifically, I mean, they're really, just really beautiful and really sort of scrumptious and yummy and, and rich. Um, but they're kind of a bit awkward. <clears throat> um, maybe for those of you who've got a really big span. I mean, my span's pretty big, but uh, you get some people who've got a really, you know, wicked span between four and five. That makes it a bit easier. Um, but that's, that's pretty rare. That's pretty uncommon. And so I want to see if I can find a way just to make this a little bit easier. And so what I'm thinking of doing is having four, five, and then I want a crescendo here, so I'm thinking five, 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 five. I could just do five, 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 but then it gets a bit choppy, you know, it's like, like, and it's, you know, the, the, the tone isn't that beautiful. This is meant to be slow and in a singing style. So we've got something rich here. So four, five for singing, nice and joined, nice and legato. But then five, 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 five for something that opens out, gets a bit broader. So I think that's probably a good fingering, um, but I'm still kind of aware that the transition, um, I don't actually have my overhead linked up at the moment, uh, maybe for another video, um, but the transition from, from, um, from this B flat to this C is there. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch and it's all just a little, it can get a bit awkward. So I want to find ways to get the arm and the wrist moving a little bit just to make it flow a bit more. So that's what I'm going to work on now. time with this, listening through the sounds, good posture, nice strong, nice and deep here, I'll try that again. Not quite, that's better. I'm listening through these sounds. So I want these to really envelop and I want them to be so rich and beautiful. And so I want to stay physically relaxed through this. So I think it was Adam Smith who said that repetition increases skill and increases, increases speed. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play this until I feel I've increased my skill and my speed with it. feel a little better now between four and five. I can probably hold that down, you know. There, more structure, that's a little better. Keep an eye on my posture. A year of lockdown will do that for you. Strong here, but relaxed. There, that's better. So I'm starting to feel better. I'm, I might um, do it the other way around. There, that's deep, relaxed. Could be a little more relaxed and bright. Mm. There, ping. And I might just try experimenting here. 
see if I can find ways to make this. Listen to that tone. So I'm using my left hand. Wow. And that'll certainly project, but now I need to make my fifth do it. <laughs> right. Try it again. It's not bad. It's still not quite as bright. I don't know if you can hear that. It's deep, but it's not bright. That's good. Good. Um, yeah, that I didn't mean to make that mistake, but it's a good way to learn. And here you are seeing these mistakes happening. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what that feels like. So, get a bit of sound. I need to project the upper more. trying to achieve here. I'm trying to get this to ping more at the top and be less muddy. Uh, so more energy at the top. There it is. Right, I'm happy with that. And now with the other stuff, throwing my hands up to... Oops. <laughs> Let's see. D flat, E flat. Yeah, E flat major 7 chord. <laughs> Bring my hands up just to stay <laughs> relaxed with this. You get very tense. I, I did teach this piece um, a couple of years ago. Um, um, Sydney, if you're watching, hello. And, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is useful. This is great now, perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's, it is one of those pieces that you can get a bit tense with. Um, and I think, uh, Sydney, you know, if you're, if you're watching, it's one of the things that we were kind of talking about. So how can you get more, more sort of relaxed with this? Let's see. I'm going to stop talking and just play a bit now.
Yeah. That's a little better, a little richer. I feel it's still bluesy, isn't it? It lags and it, it's kind of, you know, sexy and... Um, and that's a that's a thing, by the way. That's a that is a shiz. I mean, whenever you um, um, you know look at my tutorial, um, um, you know I have um, researched the history on this and really applied certain pieces and certain recordings as well as historical information to this in a way that's going to really bring it alive. And you know, there's there's so many ways that I've kind of seen this played um, um, from sort of very square and straight. <laughs> Um, it's got a little more direction than that, um, um, and I think I remember as a child seeing um, a, a video of, of Top Gun, um, and there's a, a, a lady um, I'm singing in a, in a jazz bar, and her, um, you know, um, potential um, um, <coughs> um, friend comes along and uh, um, starts playing the piano very passionately. <laughs> Uh, which is much more dramatic, but I don't know. Is it Gershwin? Is it kind of coming out of a blues tradition? Um, maybe there's room for that later on um, in the in the repeat. These are some of the ideas I'm experimenting with. So this is this is tutorial in <laughs> all its unbridled uh, experimentation. Um, but you you're getting something that is much more focused. Uh, uh <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> The other thing I've been kind of considering working with is just seeing what this, this uh, I'm looking here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and bar six, you've got this uh, B flat major seven chord that's got a staccato and an accent, followed by a rest. And to me, it seems abrupt. Um, most people kind of play this. Very sort of smolchy. Which is, which is beautiful, it, it, it is nice, but I don't know that that's what Gershwin's actually going for. Um, you I mean, you have to remember that this was like the pop music of the time. Um, and there's something I think a lot more fun about this. Um, I mean, some of the facts about Gershwin um, and Rhapsody in Blue and the Great Depression that followed, um, he was okay. <laughs> he did okay. <laughs> he, knew, he knew how to he knew how to make music fun. Uh, it's one of the reasons I respect him so much uh, as a composer. Um, absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. So I'm kind of thinking something a bit different here. This is going to seem cheese <laughs> to some of you, um, but um, I mean, this is this is American music. It, there needs to be some cheese somewhere. Uh, it needs to come out of a can, and it needs to be brilliant. So let's see. I'm thinking. that which is very different in terms of direction I'll just give you an, a, an idea of how, how most people play this Sounds, but it doesn't fit the tech. It doesn't fit the text. Uh, for a start, it doesn't fit um, the uh, um, accent and the staccato. So yeah, I'm thinking something a lot more sort of abrupt um, um, and something rather more poetic. There, we'll talk a little bit more of this in the tutorial. But the text here is quite suggestive, and I think it needs to be brought out in a funny way and in a way that's fun and a way that people are going to, you know. Um, people would have laughed at if this had been a sort of jazz bar um, and not sort of taken too too seriously. I don't know, it's a bit kind of, I don't know, a bit weird or something. Uh, <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I'm experimenting with this with the first page. The second page, um, yeah, this stuff here. Oops. 
I'm happy enough with that. It's becoming more fluent. Um, but I'm trying, I'm experimenting at the moment with the voice at the top and then with this sort of wah, 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 this um, sort of more trumpety sound, these interjections that seem to, to come in, um, um, you know, in between, which is a really fundamental part of the, of the, of the, of the blues style. Um, I've got some more specific information and some recordings for you. Um, in the tutorial um, but yeah there needs to be it needs to be laid back enough to feel like it comes out of blues but I think at the same time it also needs to have enough direction so that the phrase gets to the end um, so it's a bit of a challenge but I'm, I'm happy with that I think I think it's coming it's going in the right direction um, the other thing is then with these things Here specifically. Um, I've heard these fudged quite a lot and I can see why. That's not bad but the voicing, whenever you do it in one hand, I don't know, I don't know, it's not really that clear. And then I'm thinking well if you go finger, finger and then you add wrist in, oh, goodness, this is awkward, like that. It's a lot to coordinate in a small space of time. That's not bad. See if I can, there. So it, it is possible. But you really have to coordinate your, it's, it's great exercise for coordinating the wrist. There, that's it. But, I mean it's Gershwin, it's meant to be easy, it's meant to be fun. You know, I mean, um, um, I read that um, Gershwin, his, his first job was, uh, and working in a music store and um, playing um, songs and basically selling songs to customers. He would play them and sing them, which is a pretty cool job. <laughs> um, and I don't know, is he, is he going to sit there for, you know, three hours being like, let's see, finger, finger, how do I coordinate my wrist now with my fourth finger? Let's see if I can get it in line. What should have been there in the first place? Wrist. I mean, it's projected and you can do it. There, that's it. But I don't know. I'd be tempted to take the that option. But it's still sparkly, it's still good to sound, but it's easy. It's easier. Take the easy route. <laughs> Why not? If it sounds good, it is good. Um, here then... Um, I feel that this needs to be very scrunchy. And one of the challenges that I'm kind of finding with it at the moment is how to make it so you get, um, and then this next note, which I lost my voice last week, so I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna wreck myself trying to do it. But this needs to puncture the texture. Um, so whenever you think about brass instruments, um, you know, if you think of the end of Rhapsody in Blue, for example, you know, these um, brass instruments kind of come out of nowhere and just, you know, uh, in the texture, they punch a hole through uh, through the strings. And I feel this is something kind of similar here. I want to get this, this, um, what chord is this? Seventh chord. And so it's an A major seven with an added six. I think if I'm analyzing that correctly. Um, and that six needs to really punch out the texture. But then it has to written diminuendo and it's finding ways to get the pedal to do that, which is quite a challenge. <laughs> Not quite. Try that again. Um, which is um, better, I feel. Um, it's just it, every time it needs to feel like a surprise. Um, I think that's coming. This next section, um, again, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted about two things with this. The style seems to me like it wants to be sort of... Kind of like that. Uh, the, um, the there is a particular type of style, 
um, at the time that this seems to reflect. Uh, there's more information in the tutorial about that, um, which should help with the interpretation. Um, but that's quite fast. Um, so I'm thinking. Do you I'm going to have to play this a lot slower, so let's just drill this. Leave pretty smooth. There, nice tone. I haven't quite decided what to do with that yet in terms of dynamics. So that's covering the notes. It's quite awkward, there's quite a lot of moving around as well as big chords to get my hands over. So I might just try it hands separately now and then maybe shadow some of it. Okay, so pretty comfortable with that. And um, this this figuration, um, my um, dad used to play Scott Joplin all the time. Um, um, <laughs> absolutely horrendous octave technique, I'm sure you wouldn't mind me saying. Um, 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 but these octaves, they, you know, can be a sort of challenge to sort of grab and you need to know where you're going with them. Um, and sort of, I think that, I think that just spending some time on this, sort of grabbing these octaves and moving to where I want to go with it and where you want to go with it. Oh, maybe I need to think about it a bit more. There. It's a really good way just to make this really fluent. Just thump, 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 thump. I mean, um, the Barrel House players and, um, you know, the early, oh gosh, when was Barrel House? I mean, certainly the, the, the early 1900s anyway. Um, you know, a lot of these American players, you know, th this stuff was just what they did. Um, and in some respects, I feel that uh, you know it's a it's a technique that <laughs> kind of have to think about and you know really practice it and really hone. Whereas these guys, this is just what they were doing all the time. It just there was nothing to them. But I think one way to do it, as I say, is just to grab and then to move. Um, and you want to be able to just feel those octaves. So right now I'm looking straight ahead, not looking at my hand, because I want to make it really intuitive. I don't have time to be looking up and down every time I want to go. Just gonna splash all over the place so, there. So it's play cover. I'll try that again. And I feel as I'm doing this, I should really be acknowledging a lot of my teachers and where, where I'm actually getting these techniques from. Um, and this is combining two techniques from two teachers that I studied with. The first one is Frank King in, 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 in Belfast. Um, I think we only, I only studied with him for about, about six months or so at the time. Um, but he's talking about grabbing an octave, which is something like this, if I'm understanding it correctly. You know, you come from a fist and you do that. And I think the idea is that it teaches the hand to, teaches the hand to, um, <clears throat> 
um, how do I put it, just feel the octave really and feel, be able to feel the span of that. I think it's the wrist flexible to some extent. And the other thing is um, a technique called shadowing that I learned from Murray McLaughlin here in Manchester. And he, um, so the idea is that whenever you're doing something very tricky that involves moving around a lot, you want to develop your economy of motion. Now, why is that important? Well, whenever you're moving around a lot, if you've got superfluous motions, yeah, you're just, it's just wasted energy. And if you can hone that energy, you can use it more purposefully to play with a more beautiful sound, play faster, play more accurately, whatever it is you want to do. So I'm thinking here, grab the octave and then move. And so I'm experimenting really, I'm not sure what this is going to look like in the end, but it, I've got a good feeling about it. Oh. <laughs> there. And this is a tricky little movement. I did actually record this a couple of years ago. I watched the recording back a few days ago. Um, I was happy enough with the recording at the time, but it was, um, I, I, f I feel that now this is a more formed understanding um, and this is also one of the reasons why I feel that it's, you know the, the, that this tutorial is actually important and valuable and that you'll benefit from it um, is that you know um, whenever we sit down to play a piece of music most of the time we don't really do the research you know um, our um, um, teacher um, you know tells us what to do or we've got a combination of that and what our teachers told us to do in the past maybe we've done a bit of listening maybe we've listened to a few recordings but um, it's not, you know, full on sort of research. What, you know, where's the background of this? You know, how does this sort of come together to make a really beautiful, really expressive um, performance? Not necessarily historically before uh, informed. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in HIP anyway, despite the fact I've got some sort of, a, uh, you know, some sort of academic background. Um, but you know, using history to actually play play music more beautifully. Um, the trouble with that is that. Um, it takes a long time to research that and you need to know, you know how to research to be able to do it effectively. Um, um, and so really, you know, this is kind of this is kind of the whole idea is that, you know, I, I do have a research background, I've brought this stuff together in a way that's very concentrated that will help you get the most um, from this. So that whenever you come to play, learn this piece for your diploma, um, it's um, it's just in a really good place it's going to be really expressive it's going to be really informed your learning time will probably half your expression will you know double um just because it's you know what you're doing with it right i mean the fingers only ever follow what's in the mind so um anyway here's my raw working out of what that looks like for you <laughs> um uh, that's a tricky one right hold that then target that What I might do with that, um, I remember my teacher, um, um, Murray, uh, wrote an article years ago called Mind the Gap. Um, I think it was in Piano Professional, no, um, International Piano Magazine, that's right. Um, and the idea is that, you know, if you don't feel you have to rush a certain thing, you can put in an extra beat, you can take time to sort of get there if, it's, if it makes musical sense to do so. Uh, so what I'm thinking here is I could go very much into and just turn that into a crotchet for an eye, instead of snatching. This is what I want to do with it. And that's it there. But I got there through taking time, first of all. So I'm, I'm a little bit happier about that. Let's carry on the left hand. It's such a rushing passage, but it needs to maybe slow down Allergando. That feels better. Okay, so I've got some ideas there. Let's test that. Keep your eyes up. Better posture. Listening. Oh. -ho -ho. Da -da 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 